to do that with a gene than it is when you find a piece of non-coding DNA, you don't even know what it does. So in terms of genes, my favorite part of the chimp genome paper was a little table, and I don't think it was everybody else's favorite because it was on like next to last page of the paper, but my favorite part was a little table um, in which we listed 15 genes where the gene was associated with a human disease. So we know that that gene's involved in creating disease in humans, and not all humans get the disease. So common diseases, but diseases that don't occur in that commonly. So some people get them and some people don't. And that there's evidence, people have already done individual studies of these genes and shown that the chimp version is the one that creates the disease state. So in other words, there are humans walking around the earth and some of them have the human version, the new human version, and some of them have the ancestral version, which you could call the chimp version. It's not that the, those humans are chimps, but that they have a version that works fine in chimp, it worked fine in our ancestors, it probably works fine in mice and other mammals. But for some reason, in the human population, a new variant has arisen, and it's actually healthier to have the new one compared to the old one. And that's probably because something's changed in our environment, our lifestyle, or in some other place in the genome that now makes it better to have this new version. And while it's hard to nail them on the head and say this is definitely what Darwin was thinking about with positive selection, uh, we're pretty sure this new one arose and that it's at pretty high frequency in the human population because it's beneficial. While it's a little bit hard to nail that exactly, it's pretty obvious that that's probably what's going on with these 15 genes. So we're evolving away from a state that used to be fine and it's now not healthy because of something else that's changed around us. 